Um, today I wanted to go through a list of the tools that we have inside the house that some people may not either be aware of or um, don't really know the benefit of or just haven't thought about before. Um, the first one is our Elmira wood stove and um, we had the power go out for a couple days when it was um, many degrees below zero. I think it got down to about 18 below. Um, and we were comfortable. The only thing we really missed when, when that happened, because we were um, able to cook and everything, but the thing we, we missed, I don't know if you can see it, is our fan. We have a fan um, that's anchored to the wall and it, it blows across the stove so that the air, instead of just rising to the ceiling and passing up and out into the crawl space, um, goes out into the house. Um, so we missed that. It, it, it wasn't as cozy as it usually is. There are fans that you can buy that, that are mechanical that you put on the stove and it's the heat of the stove that runs the fan. We haven't heard really great reviews about them and they're anywhere from $100 to $300. Um, and so we've had a hard time kind of justifying that kind of expense, but now that um, we've had a good power outage and we're used to having our electrical fan that costs us like $2 a year to run, um, it's something we're kind of looking into. It's one of those um, mechanical fans. Um, the next thing is uh, this. It is a, it's like a shredder, like a salad shredder type thing, but it is really, really heavy duty. And all these different um, fixtures go on it, depending on what it is you want to um, make. And it just snaps on, and it has a top. I don't usually use this. I don't usually use this part because it's not really necessary. But it's there for if you want it, I guess. Um, anyway, I use it to grate cheese. I use it to um, grate cucumbers when I'm freezing them for soup later, or summer squash that I'm freezing for soup. Um, I also use it as uh, how I grate my soap when I'm making my laundry soap because it needs to be a really fine grate. So, so then I use the really, the really tiny holes for that. So this is one that I love. I don't know how much they cost because my mom just found it at a secondhand store and she bought three of them because she kept seeing them. So she actually offered me two, but I didn't really need more than two. So, or more than one, so I just have one. But that is a wonderful tool, especially at harvest time when you just want to get it in the freezer. Um, and then this is one of the, the least expected things that I think a lot of people are aware of. This is a, um, a cream separator. And we have goat. And a lot of times people think, oh, well, it's goat milk. It won't separate right. <coughs> or it has to sit in the fridge for two weeks before you get an inch of cream on the top. So um, we got this on eBay. And it's made in Eastern Europe. But it is shipped from Australia. And we got the manual one with the crank. Where's all my parts? Um, anyway, this is what it looks like. Um, we use it the most in the spring when the goats have just kitted and there's lots and lots of milk. Um, and these are the discs and um, I'm going to do a full video on how to put it together um, when we have milk. But I stuck my hand in a hornet's nest this summer and when my husband tried to milk the goat, my goat went dry. And so, um, for the first time in many years, we don't have goat's milk right now. But when, when you are using it, you need at least a gallon because anything less than a gallon and you don't get enough cream to really justify how many parts you have to wash. It's not a big deal to wash it. It's, it's actually really simple. But you, you, you don't want to waste your time washing more things if you're not getting much cream. So from one gallon of goat's milk, I get one quart of cream. And then, um, Oh, and I, I spent $70 on my cream separator, and, and it's a manual one. I turn a crank, but it's a centrifuge, so it, it after a bit, it actually turns itself, kind of. It's, um, it's really easy. And um, so $70 for the separator itself, and then $30 for shipping. So it was super, super affordable. They do have one that they sell in the U.S. that's not e eBay, but it's $400. And it's the same cream separator. So there's not, to my mind, it, that's kind of a no-brainer. Um, so I take my cream, and you don't want it, to, if, if you do cultured butter, yes, you can do it, you do it at room temperature. Um, but if it's fresh cream, it's, it's 
what will happen is the butter will start to form, your, your blender will start to get warm, and it will melt the butter back into the milk. Um, so, I just use my cream stuff, or my, my butter. You don't want to put more than about uh, three quarter, three pints. You don't want more than uh, three pints. I don't think, you might, want, you might not even want more than two pints. Because what will happen with goat's milk is, what will happen is the butter when it forms is it will actually foam up. And it looks different from cow butter. When you make cow butter, the cream is yellow and the milk is white. With goat butter, the milk is white, the cream is white, the butter's white. And so when it foams up, it just looks like it's really foaming. And after it's foamed up really good, you have to let it sit for a minute. And what will happen is that the foam will compact down and that's your butter. But it just looks like foam on the top of your milk until you let it sit for a minute. And I will take ice packs, um, Ziploc bags with ice cubes and a little bit of water in it, and I'll... I'll put it here and squish the blender up against the side of the fridge with the ice pack here. And what it'll do is it'll keep the motor from overheating while I'm making butter. Because I make when I make it, I make I make it all at the same time. Because I don't want to have to mess with it later. I'd rather just have a big amount of, of butter. So from one quart of cream, you get about one cube of butter. Um, and it tastes good. It's sweet. I I have not tried cultured butter yet because I I didn't actually know you could do that. Um, but I want to try it because it sounds like it would be easier to make because the bacteria has already made everything clump and hold together. Um, and you would have, I would imagine you'd have less problems with uh, the the um, the milk that is still left over after you make. Oh, so when you do the butter. So once you have it scraped off, um, I use a little tea strainer and I pour the cream, the, the cream in here through the strainer and the butter collects in the tea strainer. I dump the butter out. I do it again, I run it again, um, and then I, I pour the butter fat off, or I pour the milk off that's left over, and I save that to make yogurt and buttermilk, or for cooking, it, it just tastes a little bit acidic. Um, and then I take my butter in my bowl, put it back in the blender, take ice water, not ice, because the butter will stick to the ice cubes, ice water, and put it in, and blend it again, and the milk will come out of the butter and, and you'll have butter floating on the top again. And you just have to clean it like that a few times until the water is clear um, because what makes the butter go bad is the milk that's left in the butter. Um, I have found that I don't like to cook with homemade butter. I don't know why, but it smells bad. Um, so if any of you have any thoughts on that. But we love it fresh. We love to put it on toast and, and um, we will use it in cooking, but for like frying, we prefer our lard or our tallow from our, our beef. Um, so I'm still working on the butter recipe. So those are the tools that we use that are in the house that some people might not be aware of. Um, I, I wanted to put my scythe in this video because it's my other tool that a lot of people might not be aware of using. Um, but it's really cold outside, so I didn't want to go get it. But my scythe is from Scythe Connection and it's custom fitted to me. It cost us $350 for the peening kit, the sharpener, sharpening stone and holder, the blade, the snap, um, and it works so good. Um, it's a labor-saving device that is totally worth it. And um, yeah, so those are some tools. And I'll try and kind of expand on all these, but I kind of wanted to get that out there so that those of you who have goats and think you can't make butter, now you know, okay, you can make butter. For those of you who think you have to have a blender in order to or have to hand grade everything when you have a big harvest, you know, this works so well, um, and they're well made. So, um, or I think you have to hold a jar in order, you know, shake a jar in order to make butter, just use your blender. Um, so anyway, there we go.